Do you still believe your life can get better? I hope. I hope I'm talking to the right people. I hope the reason you're on this call is because you still believe that your life can be exponentially better. In business, we talk about these three different pillars, talk about helping families, building people, and a better life. A better life part is that you believe that your life can be better. Again, I know this is not us on this call, but there's a lot of people out there in the world, y'all, that actually don't believe that their life can get better, that their life can be like six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, your life could be exponentially better. Your financial situation could be better. Your relationships could be exponentially better. Your health could be better. Your faith life could be better. Like all of it could be better. That's a belief. There's some people that don't even believe that that's possible, right? The, the, uh, the, title, the title of that video is fight for it or forget about it. It's talking about, and the, the quote that he said at the end is, it's, he said it in the beginning, I started at minute nine, so there was some stuff before, but that was the really good part of it. He said, life will give you what you fight for or life will give you what you accept. Life will give you what you fight for or life will give you what you accept. But think about it, the things you fight for, you're not just accepting. And the things you accept, you're not fighting for, right? So life will give you either side of it. If you can fight for the life that you want. You can fight for happiness. You can fight for great finances. You can fight for great relationships. You can fight for those things, or you can accept whatever life brings you in your financial life, in your spiritual life, in your relationships and all the things. It's your choice. It's your choice. And that's what we always have to remember as we go down this path, ladies and gentlemen. You got to remember that this is your choice to fight for the life that you want. It's going to be a fight. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be simple. It's not going to, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think it is, but it's going to be more worth it than you, than you think it is. But you got to fight for it or you're just going to accept whatever life hands you. And again, that's not us. Three points that he said, right? How to change your life. Why haven't we changed our lives when we're on this pursuit of changing our life, of getting to the life that we want. Three things he said, some people don't believe that they can. So that's the first step. You've got to believe that you can change your life. You got to believe that your circumstances right now are just your circumstances right now. This is not the end of the story. This is a part of the story. You have It starts with belief. Again, I start these calls out all the time. What's the thesis? If you change your thinking, you can change your life. If you change your belief system, if you change what you believe, then the outcomes you get will change. So that's the first step to changing your life. Do you believe that your life can change? Do you believe that you have the ability to change your life? If that's a yes, then he said the second thing, the reason why many people are not changing their life, he said, is because they don't know how. You don't know how to change your life. You don't know what to actually do. But the good part about this is once you have the belief that it can change, like he said, you will find the answers. You will find the people. You will find the calls like this. You will find the resources. You'll find what you need to make your belief come true. That's the way it works. If you believe it can change, then you'll find the reasons why it's going to change. Here's the reverse side of that. If you believe something's not going to happen, you'll find all the reasons why it's not going to happen, right? The old saying, whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, either way, you're right. If you believe that you can do something and something can happen, then you're right because then you'll go to work figuring out how to do it. But if you believe you can't do something right off the bat, you'll actually find the ways and the reasons why it doesn't work or why you can't do it. This is the power of your belief. This is the power of what you say to yourself. So one, believing that your life can change. Two, some people don't know how to, but we have the resources. We've talked about it plenty of times. And these are the things that we constantly go into. How do we change our life, right? We're able to get around new people, right? Hear new things, take in new information. That's, a, that's what we're going to land on, right? It's really taking in the new information. Third thing he said is some people are afraid to leave the familiar behind. Some people are afraid to leave the familiar behind. I know people say they want to get to a better life. But if it costs you your friends, if it costs you your family, if it costs you the place, the city that you live in, 
if it co- if it costs you something, we have to now debate like is that is that worth the cost? And some people are just afraid of that. Some people are just afraid of being like, ah, if I change, if I grow, if I evolve, I'm going to be in no man's land. I'm, I'm going to not have friends. I'm going to not have anyone to associate with. I'm going to be out here in the world by myself. That's why calls like this, communities like this are important. So you know you're growing. And if the people around you aren't able to grow, you at least have other people that are, right? So those three things are the reasons why people maybe aren't changing their lives and why, right, maybe it's it's not happening for people is because either they don't believe in it, they don't believe that it can happen, they don't know how to do it, they don't know what they actually need to do to change their life, or three, they're actually afraid. There's fear holding them back from stepping into the version of themselves that they don't know. Again, all these all these old sayings, right? Uh, the uh, I, I just had it. It's something like the, you know, the... The, the devil we don't know, the devil we don't know is, or the devil we know is better than the devil we don't know or something like that, right? Like kind of like the lesser of two evils. Like at least, like I know how to handle this grief. I know how to handle this poverty. I know how to handle my paycheck when it's here. Like I know how to handle this job. I, I know how to handle this relationship, albeit dysfunctional. Like I at least know that side. But if I step away from this, I have no idea what's out there. I have no idea what the world's going to hand me. I have no idea how to do this business. So I rather just stay with the familiar than jump into the unknown. That's fear. And we all know that, right? You're, you can't, you're, nothing's going to grow outside of, uh, inside of your comfort zone. So you have to step out of your comfort zone in order to make things grow, in order for you to get to the life that you want. Those are just some reminders from, My, from Myron Golden that he had there in our text, 177 Mental Toughness Secrets of the World Class, says the great ones are learning machines. If you have the belief, ladies and gentlemen, if you have the belief that you get, your life can get better, like you just know with all your being, like my life can get better, like this stage that I'm in or this place or this financial situation or this relationship, like this is not the end. Like I can see a much brighter future. I know exactly where we're headed. The second step is, do you know how to get there? Do you know how to get there? And that's, in all honesty, what a lot of these calls are trying to do. What we're trying to do for you is give you the how. Like the, like I always say, the small things. It's it's not, life is not a, these big, right, jumps and leaps. They're, they're the small tweaks, the small tweaks and shift in perspective. The small things that we have to change in our habits that allow us to get to that life. But one of the things that Myron Golden just said, and again, one of the things that we have to know is we got to learn. You got to be constantly learning. He said something about being progressively productive, right? Meaning like God created us to constantly grow so we can pr- be progressively productive. Like we can continue to produce. We can continue to be productive in, in, in our lives. How does that happen? We got to learn. So 115 here in the book says the great ones are learning machines says here, for most people in modern Western culture, learning means memorizing facts, theories, theorems, and dates. That's what most of us were taught to do in school. To average people, learning is a late night cram session and a pot of coffee to stay awake. Professional performers have overcome this outdated industrial age system and created a formula for learning and developing their minds. As speaker Jim Rohn says, formal education will make you a living, self-education will make you a fortune. The pros know this to be accurate and invest heavily in books, tapes, and CD programs on everything from personal development to business sales, marketing, and management. They read and study trade journals and become world-renowned experts. Average people spend less than $10 annually on books. The top 1% of income earners in America invest nearly $10,000 annually on books and other learning resources. They attend seminars, workshops, and retreats. Amateur performers look at these investments as a waste of time and money. They're more likely to invest their money in lottery tickets, satellite television, cigarettes, alcohol, and other forms of entertainment. The great ones, in the words of the scientific genius Buckminster Fuller, dare to be naive. The middle class thinks they have little left to learn. World-class performers know the more they learn, the greater their level of awareness they reach, the greater the, the level of awareness, the more they realize how much more there is left to learn. The great ones know learning, like love, is infinite. There's no end until their heart stops beating. We are called to be lifelong learners. If you believe your life can change, then you need to go on a journey of learning. 
You need to go on a journey of learning because the like it says here, right? Uh, uh, middle class thing, the world class performers know the more they learn, the greater the level of awareness they reach. So the more you learn, the more you consume of things you don't currently know, the more that you learn, the more awareness that you start to have of things. You get to a higher level. There's a saying by Albert Einstein, a problem created, a problem can't be solved at the same level of awareness that it was created. A problem, if you have a problem in your life, if there's a challenge in your life, you cannot solve it at the same level of awareness that you created it. You have to get to a higher level of awareness to change that problem. How do we get to a higher level of awareness? We learn more, right? We got we to gotta continue to learn more. And then it says the, the, the greater the level of awareness, the more they realize how much more there is left to learn. And so you just continue to grow and learn. That's how we become, as Myron Golden just said, progressively productive. But the question is, how much and how fast are you learning? Not formal education. Formal education will make you a living. You'll get a really good job. Self-education makes you a fortune. What do you personally need? Self-education. This is the formal education gives the same curriculum to everyone. Self-education is what do I personally need to learn and grow and become better? That's where you have to invest your time, invest your money, invest your energy. You've probably heard this tons of different places. Like if I have, this is my last $10,000, like what, where should I invest it? Most people will tell you that have some wisdom on them. You should probably invest in yourself. You should probably invest in getting around the right people. You should probably spend $5,000 on right something that's going to get you a higher level of awareness so that you now have the ability to grow and earn more money. That's probably the wisest place to put your money, right? This, these are the little things that we got to understand because I know we, if, if, again, you believe your life can change and you want it to change, then the next step is learning how to change your life. If you haven't invested in books, if you haven't invested in seminars, if you haven't gone and traveled just to be in a room that you wouldn't necessarily be in, sometimes you got to pay to be in other rooms. Sometimes your relationships will get you into rooms, but sometimes you got to pay a little bit. It's going to cost you something to get into a room with the wealth of knowledge that you might be around so that you can change your thinking so that someone can impart knowledge on you so you can get a higher level of awareness so then you can change your life. That's how this works, ladies and gentlemen. That's how this works. And I'm always encourage you to be a lifelong learner. If you're not reading books, read books. If you're not listening to audios, listen to audios. Cut out the distractions. Get off of social media if you have to. Get away from negative people if you have to, right? Like do stuff that empowers you to, to learn and grow and get better to get to a higher level of awareness so that your life can change. The action step for today says make a commitment to develop your own self-education program. That's the key. Your own self, not what the, don't go back to school to get them to teach you something. You know you the best. If maybe I just had this conversation with a lady, maybe you need help learning about what it means to be a people pleaser. Maybe if you haven't been the type of person that stands up for yourself, that you allow people to walk all over you financially, emotionally, all those types of things. Well, school's not going to help you become less of a people pleaser. You probably need to read some books and get around some, some people that have wisdom around people pleasing and self-worth. That's, that's self-education. That's what Jim Rohn means by self-education. And that's what we have to focus on. Formal education will make you a living. Self-education is going to make you a fortune, right? It's going to make you a fortune. I love you guys. I want you to win. You deserve to win. Your families deserve to win. I want to continue to give you this information. So if you already believe your life can change, that you actually now know how your life can change. And it's by these small little things that you can course correct every single day. You get another shot at it today. You get another shot at it tomorrow to grow and learn and become the best version of yourself. 
People are counting on you. Your family's counting on you to get good. Your kids are counting on you. Your siblings are counting on you. Your parents are counting on you to get good, to get better, to have the capacity to handle what life has up ahead for you. Somebody's got to take, take that on their shoulders. And I know it's going to be you guys because you're the ones here on this call. Everyone's not on this call. You are. So go out there today, do something that scares you, do something that pushes you outside of your comfort zone. Most importantly, do something that changes the trajectory of your life, right? Where you now believe that you can grow and learn and become better. Now we got to take the steps to actually get in there. All right. I love you guys. Enjoy your Monday. We'll see you again on Wednesday. Take care.